Hey everyone, God bless you and keep you. I have a second reflection on Thanksgiving to make. I hope that you were able to see uh, my previous reflection that I posted for Thanksgiving Day called How Thanksgiving Chokes Out the Devil. I'd like to address the subject one more time before I let it go for now. Although a priest's ministry is packed with homiletical encouragements on thanksgiving. It is simply uh, the way of the church and of the fathers. St. Paul modeled it, uh, and the Holy Fathers have uh, continued this kind of pedagogical focus forever. We should esteem thanksgiving like they do. But I didn't want to let you go and leave the subject for the time being without saying a word about the most important times to say thanks. How do you actually do it, and when should it be done? When is it most important? So that's my focus now, the most important times to give thanks. Are you listening? Are you ready? All right. Please give me your heart for a second and your mind. Well, obviously, uh, if you know anything, if you've read the New Testament any amount of times, you know that the answer is always and everywhere, <laughs> at all times and in all places, we give thanks. It's simply what we do. When a person is inspired by the Spirit of God, they sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in their hearts to the Lord, giving thanks to God for everything. This is how we live. We live. But there are some times that are more particular and important than others. What are those times? Let me suggest them. First of importance, I would affirm, is at the very beginning of your day. When you arise and you're going to do your kanon, you're going to do your prayer discipline, your prayer rule. You'll notice that in the typical prayer books, it starts with giving thanks to God. There's a very common prayer of St. Basil the Great. We bless thee, O God, most high and Lord of mercies, whoever work is great and mysterious deeds for us, glorious, wonderful, and numberless who provides us with sleep as a rest from our labors. It's a consolation for our bodies tired by sin. We thank thee that thou hast not destroyed us in our transgressions, but in thy love for mankind thou hast raised us up, that we may glorify thy majesty. That is a beautiful prayer. Before you say the exclamation, I encourage you there at that spot to tell God specifically what you're thankful for. Tell him what you're thankful for every single morning. Don't make it just a generic prayer. Make it a specific prayer. Have uh, an interior list that you've memorized that's written on your heart that comes out every morning so that God knows how appreciative you are of what he's given you and so that you remember why you are a thankful person or should be a thankful person right now, this very day. Look, there's... Every person has a collection of things that they can be thankful for. And to enumerate them alters your life. The way I describe this best to people is imagine you're starting the day, right? And you're wondering, how, what kind of day is this going to be? Is it going to be a good day? Is it going to be a bad day? Is it going to be a mediocre day? You have the scales before you, right? Good day, bad day. If you do not give thanks to God in the morning, you start like this. The first trouble, and there's going to be trouble, for goodness sake. You're going to come into trouble at five minutes. An hour? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yesterday, my wife was driving between church and home with my children, and a poor man jumped out into the middle of the street and laid down in the middle of the road as a car was coming so that the car would run him over. Thank the Lord. The driver swerved around the man, and it was just near a train overpass, and so the man didn't get his way in, in suicide. He ran over on the train tracks. Thank, thankfully, the man who swerved around stopped. Uh, people coagulated around the man. They called 911. Hopefully the man has survived. This is our life. We live in a world that lies in the power of the evil one. You're either in the presence of those who are triumphing over that power, or you're in the you're coursing through the darkness of uh, Satan's realm, which he's losing as the church makes progress in the world. You know you're going to face difficulties. You know that's coming. So why not load down the good day by your prayer of thanksgiving? You know, when I say that every morning, I have a list of about 17 things. I say these things every single morning to God without fail. I add new things. If there was, for instance, a 
a nice wind in the night or if I heard the birds chirping or uh, I got a, a significant rest and I felt rejuvenated. I add that to many other things. You should have your list. And then just imagine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 17. This is how I start every day. We all can do this. Do you know what it takes, how many horrible things you have to uh, encounter just to even bring it back to an even day, let alone a bad day? If you start by weighing in with thanksgiving and gratitude to God for what he's done to you. So this is my first word. What are the most important times to give thanks? Right in the very beginning in the morning, right? When you start your, your prayers. Number two, St. John Chrysostom in his first sermon on Lazarus and the rich man, he says the a time for Thanksgiving that God has appointed is also immediately after supper. He said this is how Christians live. They eat and then while they're together, they say thanks about this and that. This is a wonderful practice to ask your compatriots at the table, your dinner companions. And if you don't have any, invite someone over. Arrange to meet with them. And then say what you're thankful for in the day. The things that you have marveled at that the Lord has sent to you that day. And ask your children, honey, what what do you have to give thanks for, thanks for, for today? And then you can feel rich as you celebrate together in different uh, triumphs, different beautiful things that God has given because there's not a day in which he doesn't pour out more gifts than we can count. That's number two. First thing in the morning, number one. Second, after dinner. Third, the third most important time to give thanks, according to St. John Chrysostom, is when things are going terrible. <laughs> when everything is going to hell in a handbasket. This is from his 19th homily in his commentary on St. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians. He says that when we are in poverty or sickness or disasters abound, then increase your thanksgiving and really show your faith. That is the time to really face and practice, face up to your faith and practice it. That God works all things for good according to those who love him and and are called according to his own calling. We have to demonstrate our faith in. That's the time. Everybody can be thankful. They aren't, but everybody can be thankful, obviously, when they get something that appears to them good. But what about being thankful, especially when there's great trials, right? This is how we can get to the place where we can heed St. James's call to Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, that you may become perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. This is the Christian way. And St. John Chrysostom is encouraging us. Give thanks in the morning, right away. Give thanks after dinner. And give thanks especially when things are going disastrously. Then stop and lift your thanksgiving to God. St. John Chrysostom also says that the best preservative of God's benefits, if you want God's blessings to continue to be heaped upon you, the best is remembrance of them, the remembrance of the benefits, and the continuation of your thanksgiving. This is his homily 25 on his commentary, his magnificent commentary on the Gospel of St. Matthew. He says the best preservative of God's benefits, if you want God's blessings to stay with you, to be hooked to your heart and never leave, to continue like a rushing river upon your head, then never forget, constantly recount his blessings and continually offer thanksgiving. Just think of it this way. You're a parent or a grandparent and you give your child or grandchild or godchild a gift. If that person receives it with humility, looks you in the eye and says, Papa, thank you so much for this. This is wonderful and precious. I really appreciate it. What does that do to your disposition to give them additional gifts? Contrast that with someone who receives a gift. You, you give a, a beautiful gift to your child or grandchild or godchild, and they take it. They don't look you in the eye. They don't say thank you. They just take it and rip it open and, like some stinking barbarians and start uh, using it. What's your disposition then? You think to yourself, oh, you know what? I shouldn't give them any more gifts because it's just going to keep mounting their sins like mountains because they're so uh, selfish and ungrateful. 
right? You don't want to continue to bestow gifts upon ingrates. But those who are thankful, absolutely you do. Absolutely you do. I'll leave you with one last encouragement on the most important times to give thanks. From St. John Chrysostom, you notice that I've been uh, heaping the golden mouth upon you. You're welcome. You're welcome. This comes from his commentary on the 13th Psalm. And he says that it's, it's very important for us to make a record of God's kindnesses in your life. Make a record. He himself did this by constantly speaking about the deliverances of God and not forgetting them. You know, this last Sunday in my sermon, I uh, encouraged my parishioners because the Lord has done something very wondrous in the state of California. We have been, until this last year, locked in the worst drought in the 126 years of record keeping of uh, precipitation in the state of California. We were just in a terrible way and Many people throughout the country and the world have seen how much we've burned uh, for years and years uh, in, the, in this recent decade. The worst fires ever on record. And yet, though we haven't yet repented, though so many uh, in this state uh, ignore God and don't give thanks to God, let alone acknowledge his existence and honor him as God, yet in his great mercy as a sign of of his unconditional love and his desire for us to turn to him. He sent us beautiful, gentle, but consistent rains so abundantly that there is not any place throughout the state of California that is in drought today. May his name be praised and may we mark it on the record of God's kindnesses, we who live here in California. May it expand our heart with gratitude. These, dear ones, are the most important times to give thanks. And may the Lord inspire us to be grateful people. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to announce the launch of PNP Kids, our new YouTube channel for children's content. Please join us for story time with Presbytera Catherine as she reads Orthodox children's literature. We invite you also to join Father Jason each week for the Sunday Gospel and children's homilies. And tune in to Cloud of Witnesses, where a full cast of performers reenact the lives of the saints. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Patristic Nectar Kids, or find us via the PNP Kids podcast on your favorite podcast streaming platform. And please consider making a donation to Patristic Nectar Publications so that we may continue to offer more free content.